Hey everyone, Zephyr here, leading in with some Bastion, because it's on the Humble Bundle Weekly Sale, first ever. I figured I'd show off mostly the combat, as the story in the game kind of speaks for itself. You can see that anywhere, and it's pretty awesome, take my word for it. The narrator in the game is a big part of that. Just his voice and the, the, the style and the feel that he sets really gets it going. Now this is one of the repeatable combat training areas essentially that you get money from, experience, and yeah. Well, not really experience, everything in this game is money. You get the money, you upgrade your weapons, and you go from there. I've got everything currently maxed because this is a new game plus. I gotta get out of here. <laughs> Which is why this is so much harder than it otherwise would be. All of the, as you play, you'll get you'll become used to them. All of the totems, I think that's what they're called. Wow, I don't remember. I just read that too. All of the optional god bonuses and debuffs are active at the moment. So Garmoth that reflects weapon shots, and occasionally they turn invisible. I think they just got themselves trapped, or something else happened. I'm not sure. I'm not gonna argue though. Yep, there he goes, turn invisible. Hoop! The sky bridge is so handy. <laughs> and when they die, they explode into bombs that also hurt me. Oh, they don't actually get bothered by the ground. They just got stuck, I guess. I don't think I've seen a glitch in this game before. Whoops, going down. Ow. Okay, getting a little bit cornered here. There's a, I could have done the other one, the old man's book one. I did that a little bit, but it was taking forever. It's a hard one. I wasn't expecting this little duo though either. As you'll notice, timing in this game means a lot. I get that power shot off, which makes a heck of a lot of difference in the amount of damage that I do. I also have my special attack, which I might as well use. <laughs> a special one that I found. Whoops. The portal gun. Which they just flattened. I don't think I'm going to be able to pull this off, actually. Let's go back to the Bastion. I'll show you that, and we can go into the other one and play around in there for a little while. In this game, you always bring in two weapons. I've got the bow and the... I'm not even sure what they call it. Essentially, like, flame caster or something. Fire bellows. Breaker's bow, the cannon, the mortar, carbine, pike. There are melee weapons too. They're kind of dangerous to use though. They're in fact exceedingly dangerous. <laughs> Dual pistols, scrap musket, machete. The fang repeater is kind of fun, and the hammer. We'll go in with a couple of different ones just so, just so you can kind of see what they do. I did say, you know, melee is difficult, so we'll try it out. And the repeater, I think. And these are all the special abilities that you unlock throughout the game. You also always have your shield. No matter what weapons you have equipped, you have a shield. Which is pretty dang handy. I'll show that to you too. It is all, again, all about timing. Which one do I want to play with? You can see there's quite a few of them though. And but they all, they're also dependent upon what weapons you're currently using. These are all the other ones that I can no longer use because I'm not using those weapons. Except for a couple like these, that don't rely on a weapon. They're just what they are. Let's play with a mirror shield. I don't know if I'll actually don't use it. The hammer better than a box of nails. That's the old guy. He narrates Those everything. Ain't as bad as they look. And I don't know where he came from, but he's got a very nice voice to listen to. Very easy on the ears. All right, the first couple rounds will be easy and they will allow me to really show off what you can do, to an extent. Some of the harder stuff actually shows it off a little better sometimes because you're pushing to not die. You have to do everything. And those are all the totems, sigils, whatever the hell they are. They're also activatable in town or deactivatable. You do not ever have to use them, but they grant this you more stuff. Me, though you might as well know where I'm coming from. And as you can see, they dodge. As you saw me use constantly last time, the dodge is crazy useful. I also slow down when I get hit. Ooh. Okay, melee is not necessarily a good idea on these guys. 
And that's the repeater. Problem with the repeater is you can't move while you're using it. Counter. <laughs> and that is the benefit of the shield. I don't think I took a very good um, weapon combo for this. Another totem ability is that they regenerate health if you don't attack them. See what? Oops, that's not the what? Not what I meant to do. Mirror shield. <laughs> and that's the little bomb that they turn into. All right. Yes, the the hammer for these guys is definitely not a good idea. You can see they, this, that's one of the abilities of the weapons. You customize the weapons with different abilities, whatever you want to use. As soon as you have the, the money, the experience, the consumable, whatever you want to call it, to do so. And you can you can upgrade them according to your preferences. It's There's five different levels, I believe, and there's two options on each level. So, I mean, it's not a massive amount, but it is definitely something. And then once it gets down to just one of them, they're a lot easier to block. You can anticipate them. I ain't much for worldly things. And th All that's the experience. Money consumable. From when I was young. Let's see if maybe I can actually. Ooh. Yeah, no, I should not have taken the hammer. However, if you'll notice, they can hurt each other too. Get them caught in their own crossfire. And they will totally blast each other to bits. Or you can just kill them with their own bullets. Without a problem. Goes right back at him. Doesn't always go back quite that smoothly. Invisible guys. Some of the totems are... A lot more, oops, a lot more detrimental than the others, which is why they grant more experience. Let's line these guys up. And the guy behind him will beat up the guy in front. Oh, I thought I already killed him off. He just went invisible is all. <gasps> I forgot about that combo. You come out of the shield directly into a hammer blow. Works out pretty well. There's one old book in particular I still like to read from time to time. It covers the important things, in a manner of speaking. Up under my health and experience bars, you've got the health potions, which I'm now out of, and the, whoops, the potions for those. You use one up with each special attack. These guys are fun because they literally will bounce off of each other. And you can bounce them around. You do not want to get caught in their slime trails, though. They kind of hurt. Normally, health potions would drop randomly. However, and I believe that's another totem. It disables that. And makes things dangerous. Pinned me down quite nicely right there. They don't always bother to actually change direction, which is amusing. Come on, you guys. So this is going to be over here momentarily. These are the basics of the game though, of basics of combat. You also know, you notice I also heal when I counterattack. Makes it a lot more useful. There's a lot of different things that you can do once you, you know, get the experience and max it out. It is a very active game though. I'm playing with the controller, you can also play with the mouse and keyboard. I, d I tried playing with the keyboard, debated it, but it's rather smoother with a controller. Just one of those games. Because you have to do a lot of running around. Don't pin me down. Charge me! You do also kind of 
With the controller especially, you auto-target if you're within range, which can be detrimental because you'll be auto-targeted to an enemy that you're in blocking them. And then when you turn, you keep facing them and somebody else will hit you from behind. You can also knock them off the edge. You can fall off the edge yourself though too, so you have to be careful with that. Like so. I think you saw me do that in the first one, so there really wasn't a need to show that. But, whatever. <laughs> Come on. So these some of these fights can get long, especially in, you know, hard mode like this. Goodbye. 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 Not quite. Oops. They turned my tactic my technique against me. <laughs> Once the num enemy numbers go down, it becomes much simpler to control them. Oof. However, you notice if they get carried away on you, that can pretty much end you. Come on. <laughs> I love the shield. Not even quite a weapon, but it's one of my favorites. Goodbye. And now this guy will proceed to beat himself against me. Until I knock him off. Like so. All right, we'll see what go. the next group is. A is for Kobe, the goddess of oath and abandon. Make a promise, and the chastened maid will hold you to it. Oh god, this one. No, it takes forever. Let me show you the map. Show you one more basics of the game. <laughs> you start in this... Well, no, you start on one of the map pieces. You end up in this little town hub here. Like, yeah, this one where I showed you the, the city... Not the city. The blacksmith where you have all the weapons. And from there... You head out to the map, to all of the different worlds, and some of the proving grounds. They essentially, they're there to upgrade your weapons, give you more stuff, if you can pass their tests. And that's the entire game. You go through this map area, you go through the storyline, and you do it again. <laughs> With the new game plus, or they have a score attack mode too. And there's a couple different endings you can you can end up with depending on what choices you make. All in all, it's a very good story game that's a lot of fun. And if you enjoy the combat, there's no way you won't enjoy the game. I mean, the combat is one of the biggest parts of the game because you... Well, I mean, you can overlook the story, but you can't overlook the combat if you don't enjoy it. You can play casual mode where you essentially have unlimited continues, so you never have to worry about dying. You just keep trying. And if, if you just want to go through the story but find yourself not very good at the combat, you can just do that. They totally help you out and make sure everybody can play the game. That, however, is Bastion. Hope you enjoyed it. I'd want to do a little more than that, but there's a lot of time that takes in this game. There's a lot of talking, there's a lot of downtime, a lot of wandering around. But at the same time, it doesn't feel long until you look at the clock afterwards and you go, where did the time go? It's one of those games. Thank you for joining me, though. I'll catch you all next time. See you later.